book class, I'm going to do a little demo here for how to get started in AutoCAD with your house design, whether you're in Architecture 1 or Architecture 2. Um, this is a process that's helpful. It uh, goes well. Um, so let me kind of show you real quick the plan that I'm using. Uh, this is the plan that I'm going to be using at the demo house for our class this semester. It's large enough that it covers just about everything you guys could experience on your um, on your project. So hopefully that will work and uh, we'll get you all set up there. Uh, one of the things that is kind of nice about uh, what we're doing here is it's, it can go pretty quick, but you do have to be familiar with your house plan. So I'd encourage you to take the time to study it over and start thinking about things you want to do with it. When we begin drawing your plan, you um, don't want to just draw anywhere. You want to pick and have a plan for it. So typically you'll start in the lower left, upper left, upper right, lower right. Uh, in this house, uh, we have a garage here. I don't start with a garage, primarily because that's an area that changes quite often. And I'm not too happy with the one size here. So this garage is 26 feet from the door to the wall, which is plenty of room, but it's only 2210 going across the interior. And that's a little tight for two cars to open the doors. So I might make this 22 foot 10 distance a little different. Now let's talk about that distance first a little bit here. The first value is always the X or the horizontal. The second is always the Y or the vertical dimension of each room. Now some rooms do not have dimensions, so you have to kind of work that out with educated design choices. And we'll talk about that as we go. So this tutorial I'm going to do the side of the house. Uh, in this case, this area here is where we're going to look at. And hopefully that will be enough uh, to make that work. Okay, so that's what we're going to look at. All right, so let's get started. Ready? Okay, here we go. Uh, so first I'm going to open up AutoCAD and start a new drawing. Now, um, right now I need to do a couple of settings to make it work right. So the first thing I'm going to do is units. And I need to change it from decimal to architecture. And I need to change precision to the nearest half inch. And that would be just fine for walls. If I was doing millwork or cabinetry, I'd go to 16th, maybe in 32nd. But for right now, half inches would be good. So hit OK. Then when I come up here to the top of your area, find the layers box in the home tab. And with that, let's see if I can get this to do what I want it to do. Um, so what that's going to do is if I use this home uh, tab up here, then look at the layer properties here. So I'm going to open that up. And there's my layer properties. Now, as I look across here, the first one here, that is for a new layer. It's got a little starburst. The next one has a snowflake. That means you can freeze it so you can't see what's on that layer. The little X means you're deleting that layer. And the check mark means you're making it current. So I'm going to click Make a New Layer. And there's my new layer. And then I'm going to give it a new name. And I'm going to just type in walls. And I need to probably do that all caps because that is the standard for our what we do. And then they come across the light bulb here says I can see it. Uh, the sun says it's work I can work on. It's thought out. I can lock the layer so I can see it but not change it. I can make the layer so it doesn't print. And then they change the color. And the color I'm going to go with is red. And I typically use these colors because they're standard. I know what uh, the plotters are going to do with them. You can use any of them. Don't don't limit yourself. Uh, but I just I make it's less choices to make. So uh, I just use these down here. But you can use any of the colors in the palette. You can go to True Color and pick those. You can even go to Color Blocks. So uh, whatever makes you happy. It's your screen. It's to keep you from getting eye strain. So it's all good. So again, I'm going to go with red and hit OK. And then I'm going to come across here. I'm not worried about line type right now, but I'm going to worry about line weight. And I want you to set this to 0 0.6. So it's a, your 0.5 is like a 5 millimeter mechanical pencil. We're going to go a little bit thicker, okay? Just a little bit thicker because it's kind of coming kind of in between right now, and it makes it easier to see. So we hit OK. And now I've got everything good except it's not my current layer. The check mark says where I'm wanted, where I'm working. The zero layer you can't delete, you can't rename. 
it has some limitations to it. So I'm going to come down to this parallelogram and then double click on it with my left mouse button. Or I could come up here and click on this icon because it's highlighted. I'm just going to double click. And now it's my current layer. It now shows in my top. So I can close this window. If I want to go back to the zero layer, I can just click on it. It's pretty straightforward. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to start my lines and drawings. So here's my line command over here, or I can just type L and enter, and that's the line command. And I'm gonna go ahead and start that line anywhere on my screen, and I now draw it at any angle or length that I want. In order to keep my line straight, because I want a nice square set of house and making sure it looks good, I'm gonna press the F8 key, and then I can only draw horizontal and vertical, and that kind of helps. So in this way, I'm going to go in my direction. And the direction I want to go is, since I'm starting the quarters to the right, I'm going to do 12 and apostrophe. Apostrophe means feet. And I enter that in, and now I can't see the line. So I enter again, and on my mouse, I'm going to pull the roller button back, and that zooms me out. And there's my 12-foot line. If I want to measure that, I type DI. And that takes me to the distance command. And I can measure it from that endpoint to that endpoint, and I can see it's at 12 feet. Okay, now I'm going to use primarily offsets to create this, so I don't have to draw a lot of lines. I'm going to take one line and clone it. Um, I'm doing inside walls. I'm not going to do the outside wall thickness until the end because I haven't decided if I'm going to do brick or stucco or siding or log or stone. I haven't made that decision yet, and I probably won't until I have more of a feel for the house. But I'm going to go with my next wall. And if you remember the plan, that's where I'm at. So this is, I just drew right along here. Just right along this wall right here. And I'm going to go up and do this wall up here is next. Okay. So I'm going to do uh, an O for offset. In other command CAD programs, it's called parallel. Type in 12 feet. Select the line. And I'm back up here. Now I can go up or down, depending on which way you're going. I'm going up, so now I have two parallel lines, and I'm making progress. So I know that there's a wall here, so I'm going to go ahead and draw a line and connect those together. And I could do an offset 12 feet and put this one in, or I could just draw a line and close this room. So there's one room completely done. Now they put this wall thickness in. I'm going to use a 2 by 4 stud. That makes it 3 and a half inches, not 4. 4 is what it is before we dry all the water out of it. Um, so it's about 3 and a half inches. And then add a half inch gypsum board on each side. Gypsum board is sheetrock, drywall. It's all the same type stuff. So it's just brand name. So do offset. So 3 and a half plus a half is 4 plus a half is 4 and a half. So then put in 4.5. And then I could put inches. That's the quote mark. Now, because my units are set to inches, I don't have to put the quote. Uh, but it's a good practice to start. And But I will probably not do the quote much. So I hit enter, select the line, and keep going up. So now I'm at uh, my first big choice. Um, I'm here at this hallway. <clears throat> and I've got this closet and a linen closet, walk-in closet, linen closet. I don't have the sizes for those, but I do know that the code says a stairway width is a minimum of three feet, um, and that's the same minimum for a hallway is three feet. Well, if I look at this stair and this hall, I can see this is a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna say it's gonna be four feet. I may change that later, but for right now, I'm gonna go with four feet. So I'm making a design choice but I'm staying within compliance with the code. You never want a house a stairway, for example, we'll talk about that, wider than four feet because you have to add extra railings when you do that. But, um, but I can get my hallway set up there. So it's a good place to start. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my drawing. I'm gonna do an O for offset. I'm gonna put in 48 inches, which is four feet. Select my wall, and then pop it. Oh, I did not get that right. I did bad. 
I made a mistake. So I can do E for erase and L for last, and that will erase it. Or I can just go in and select it and hit the delete key. And I can see what I did in my offset. I put in four and a half. I needed 48. And now I select the line, and there's my fourth space. So I go ahead and put that wall thickness in while I'm at it. Four and a half. And it, just, it goes very quickly. Add a line to show where the closet is. And now I need to do some um, rational thinking on this just a little bit. I'm actually going to start at this corner of the house, uh, of the bedroom. There's a doorway that sits about right here, and that's this door here. Now, I can't put a door right by a wall. There has to be room to frame the, the door itself. Uh, you need at least three inches. I like to go four. It's a little easier to paint. It's a little easier to get the right trim. Um, it just looks better. So I'm going to go four inches from the wall to the start of the door. This is the hinge part of the door. And then a bedroom door is typically two foot six inches or 30 inches wide. I like to go a little bit wider because it makes it easier for furniture. So if I go with a two foot eight door, that's a 32 inch door. So there's four and 32. So now 36 inches plus another four because there's another wall here. It's technicality. Probably could be able to put four. So now I'm at um, what is it? 32, 36. Uh, I'm now at 40 inches from this wall to the start of the closet. And that's what I'm going to go with is 40 inches. So this, uh, and that's just a choice. It's simply a choice. I'm going to draw a line to get that set up. Actually, I'm going to use the wall here. So I'm going to do an offset, 40 inches, and bring that over. Now, this line needs to be up here, not down in the bedroom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select it without a command, no command there. I get three blue squares. The one in the middle lets me move it around. The ones on the end let me stretch it. So I can do this and flip that wall up. I can either do even pull down a little less. So if you notice, watch what happens when I get there. So there's an intersection, that's an X. That's a square, that's an endpoint. There's a perpendicular, which looks like an angle symbol. Those all come from your O snaps being set here on the side. And that's this square with a square. Those let you grab onto things, make sure lines are connected. Very, very cool tool. And then I'll leave it where it is right here right now because I want to show you something else. So that is where um, technically, um, if everything's right, well, let me do a measure real quick. EI, make sure I get messed up. Four, there's six, that's 40 inches. So I can get my, with my door there. I'm going to offset four and a half inches. This becomes the start of the linen closet. Now linen closets, um, they can be as shallow as 12 inches, but I would not go more than 30 inches. Um, that's about as far as you can reach with your hand to get into a closet. So um, if you can, uh, try and keep them as shallow as you need to still work. I like them to be about 24 inches if I can, uh, same as a coat, as a closet in a bedroom. Uh, mainly because you, you've got a lot of sheets and towels that go in those. Um, and things along those of that nature. So um, that's kind of what I kind of go off of. So I'm going to do another offset. If you enter twice, it takes you back in the last command that you're doing. 24. Grab here and go over. Enter, enter. 4.5. Wall goes in. Okay, this becomes a walk-in closet. This is my linen closet. This is my hallway. So things are not too shabby. Um, I might, again, I might decide to move these walls later. I'm not sure. But I do need to do some cleanup here. These walls are not um, neat. So I'm going to do what's called a trim command, TR for trim. And what I need to do is it's ask me, what are my cutting edges? So in other words, pick the knives. Well, I want to do this wall and this wall and this wall and this wall and that wall. Well, that's a lot of practice and getting well, but if I just do a trim and I do a crossing window over the area I'm working, it's a little faster. Once I'm done picking things to cut with, 
entered in, that's the right mouse button or the enter key, both work. Then when I come back by and flip my cursor over it, I can see what will be removed if I click. I'll remove this one and this one. I want that open and I want this open and I can click and open these as well. And so now my walls are open and, and they flow together well. So this is a pretty good sized closet, a little linen closet and a doorway. Okay, next is my bathroom. Bathroom needs another little bit of a design choice on there. Um, I don't have any dimensions for the bathroom either here. What I do have is industry standards. So if I look at the master suite over here, the ensuite, I've got a big old garden tub. Well, that is nowhere near what this bathroom is, this bathtub. So I'm gonna go off a standard bathtub. A standard bathtub from the wall to the edge of the tub is 30 inches. And from one end of the tub to the other is five feet. That's a standard tub. That's most like what's in your house. So I'm going to use that to determine the size of this room. Now, I've also got a little corner jog right here, which is a very, very expensive corner because I'm just cutting about four inches of drywall, and then I have to tape and mud that. So I'm going to take this back wall here and just align it, make it all the same wall. Okay, now this wall here behind the water closet or the toilet is a plumbing wall. And that means there's a four inch drain from your toilet down to the sewer line. That's the biggest drain in the house. All the others are about an inch or less. And uh, so it's a large drain. So I need to have room in the wall for that or it, it gets where it's hard to see. Okay, so what we're gonna do then is we're gonna move that uh, wall forward. And so I know from here to here is gonna be five feet, which gives me plenty of room to work. And the, to the bat toilet here, the water closet, I, the code says I need from the wall to the center, I need 15 inches. And from the center to the next wall, 15 inches. That's the minimum. Now, if you have to repair that uh, water closet or change it out or clean around it, that's kind of a tight space. I like to go 18 inches to the center. That gives you 36 inches of room there. It's a little more uh, friendly for the homeowner. And so that's what I'm gonna do my design on because I really don't need this much countertop space in the sinks. And I'm not a big fan of dual sinks anyway. It's usually only one gets used, but here we go. So bathroom up above here, I know I'm going five feet. So offset 60 inches, that's five times 12. That's the wall. I know I've got a line coming in here. So I'm gonna do the line next, so I'm keep my walls all connected. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and start building this out. So I've got 30 inches for the tub, plus 36 for the water closet. So now I'm at, uh, da, 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 da. so that's six, uh, three feet, six feet, five foot six. Okay, I'm just shy of six feet. So I'm gonna do an offset of 66 inches. And this goes from this wall over. So there's my tub and my water closet. This is a wall and it kind of lines up kind of close here. And I kind of like it lining up kind of close here. Um, and knowing what space I've got here, I'm gonna move these two walls. Uh, and so everything stays up. The more lines, the more walls I can keep aligned, the better the construction and the stronger the house. It just kind of works that way. So here's how I'm going to do that. I'm going to use a command called stretch. So you just type et, S and enter. I'm going to take my crossing window. I want every grouping of endpoints. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight endpoint pairs. I want those all selected. I'm going to enter that in because I'm done picking objects. I'm going to go from this corner. That's not the corner I wanted. I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna do my crossing window. I want this corner to line up with this part of the wall. That means I've gotta get it there. Now, if I put my F8 on, that's gonna keep my lines going straight, which is good, but um, I need to get to that wall. So I'm gonna do what's called, and I, my object snaps are kind of fighting. So I'm gonna do a master override. I'm gonna type P-E-R. 
enter. That makes a perpendicular. So now when I come to this line, you see that little green symbol looks kind of like a chair. That means I'm going to move perpendicular to lie a line with the line that my cursor's on, like so. And so now this all lines up. Uh, still a good size closet here. Good because we've got you can fit a tub and a toilet in it. So it's good size. Do my offset again. Five. Bring that over. So now I've got the room for this sink area. Not quite sure where the wall is here yet. That will come in a minute. I go back to my plan real quick. Uh, there is this weird room right here that's not a room. It's actually a plumbing chase because we've got two uh, showers back to back. Um, it doesn't need to be this big. It, it really doesn't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it 30 inches this direction, and then I'm going to put it in this way. Now this shower here is 30 inches by 4 feet. So it's basically just a mini tub, if you will. It's a tight shower, but it's like the one you have at home if you have a tub shower combo. So it, it works. Uh, it's not luxurious like the one in the master ensuite. Okay, so here we go. We make the chase. Uh, that's going to come off right here. And um, what I'm going to do with that is this. Where am I going? I guess lost track where I'm at on this plan. So closet. Yeah. So I'm up here in this area. I'm going to do my offset for my plumbing wall. So the plumbing wall here is behind the, the water closets. It, again, has to some... Uh, be able to take on that four inch pipe so it's a five uh, it's a two by six stud that makes it five and a half plus a half inch gypsum board so now it's six plus another half on the other side so it's a six and a half inch wall so i'm going to do my offset 6.5 there's my plumbing wall really thick wall and now i'm going to start bringing my lines up so i'm going to take a line command I just did a little segment of a line here for right now, so I can work it through. I need to do a little trim work while I'm looking at it. I see the, these walls aren't cleaned up, so I'm going to quickly clean them up so I don't forget. Okay, so everything's kind of all modularly set up. I'm going to come over 30 inches. This is where the tubs is in a, the shower is going to be. Um, I'm going to go ahead now and do the chase. I'm going to make it 18 inches. So 18 inches from here. And I come back. To offset again, 4.5. And that still feels, that feels really big. I might be doing some changing. Do another offset for the other side. And that does feel very, very big. Because I like the, the water closets. To line up so from this point to this point I would like that to be three feet well I'm pretty sure I'm not there so I do an offset of 36 yeah I, I need to move this the other direction which means uh, a couple of things so I'm just gonna do a move I'm gonna M, oh, let me do that again M for move select my objects when I'm done selecting hit enter pick a point Move it in the direction you want to go and top four. Go. I'm just going to move it four and a half inches because I just need that much space. That gives me room for a water closet, water closet. They can share the drain now, which makes it a lot cheaper to install. I want to make sure we keep costs in control if possible because that makes your clients happy. And happy clients are really good clients. So that's good. Now, what we then do here is, I'm not sure about the depth here. Um, so if I'm looking at that, I've got to really decide how I want to do that. And that's a tricky part because I really don't want um, these huge, huge chases. So if I do a distance command, DI, I can measure from this endpoint to that perpendicular. It's still two feet. I, I don't need that. I only need it to be um, 18 inches. Um, so what I need to do then is I'm going to do an offset of 18. And then I'm going to pull it way down here. So that means I'm going to just select and delete. 
Now I'm gonna bring those back. U is undo. So if you ever need to undo something, I'm gonna, if I do the erase command, I can select those lines and then hit and hit enter. Or you can just select the lines and hit the delete key. Either way works. I'll set five. Okay, now I'm ready to make these corners uh, of this wall. Um, I could do the trim command, that would be just fine. But there's another command that's a little quicker. It's called fill it. You type F and enter. So escape, get out of the command you're in, F, enter. Um, if you then use the fill it command, you want 90 degree corners, that means you need to do a radius. Make sure the radius is zero. If you've got, you can put a radius around a wall. Uh, we're not doing that at this point. We'll do that a little later if we need to. But make sure your fill it is set to zero. Then you select one wall and the next one, you get a nice little corner. Right click, repeat the command, and do the second one. And it just makes a nice real quick cleanup to where you're at. Okay, so now I know I've got a going over, I've got water closets that sit here and a sink that's going to sit here. So I'm going to look at my plan and I'm going to deviate from what I have on my paper because I like the fact that this is mimicking up here. So we've got this closet situation and there's a wall here. I want this wall up here. So I'm going to do what's called a copy command. Copy command can be done with a CO or a CP. So when the program was first built, um, people weren't very good typers and they'd hit O and P often at the same time. So both commands do the same thing. They're exactly the same. So C, O, C, P. I'm gonna select these two lines, enter that in, pick a base point, this and drag it up. I'm not even worried about connecting, I'm just gonna get it up there, okay? So what this is, is I've got a water closet and a sink. That is this bathroom. And now I need to create the closet for it. And this is what's going to set the walls here, is the size of the closet that I give them. Well, this closet down here is a pretty good size closet. If I do a dimension on that, uh, or distance, it's a, it's a five foot closet, which is just a good size closet. Um, so what I'm thinking is if I give these guys a five foot closet, that might be a good deal. So we then work that out. So in order, I need the walls up here. So I know I've got a four foot shower. Let's put that in, offset, create, wall comes up, offset, repeat, 4.5 inches for the wall thickness. That's good. Now it's gonna come across, and I'm looking at that's pretty good deal to go. Um, it's going to go five feet. So I'm just gonna take this wall over, offset, 60 inches, that fills about, feels kind of right, maybe, maybe you might give them six, maybe, maybe give them that extra six inches, what do you think? Yeah, let's do the extra six inches, feels good. So I'm just going to do a move, select that line, pick a point, and then move it six inches, and so verify my value with the distance, the I, Five foot six, these two closets are then the same size. Enter, back to my enter, enter. That's just an offset, 4.5. There is this wall that's going to come down here for this bath. Fill it, F for fill it, zero radius. This one's going to come down to here. Whoops, that was bad. Control Z is an undo. Fill it, this line, and that line. Repeat the fillet. This line comes down to this line. And I might as well pull this line across, same thing, fill it. Pull this one over to here. And this one over to here. And now I have that all set. Now I've got to close this all off. So there's a pretty nifty command. It's called extend, EX. It's like the trim command or the stretch command, but a little more control. It's got boundaries. So I hit extend, enter. I can pick this one line as a boundary. 
enter that in, and then tell these lines to go to it. So if I repeat that, extend, I can pick this as a boundary and this as a boundary, enter that in, and tell these lines to go to it. Well, that's that gets my lines placed, but I gotta do some trimming again. Always, always trim as you go, so you don't make mistakes. TR for trim, and then do my crossing window, so I get all the lines I need. And I'm just gonna start clipping out those little gaps so that everything is the way it needs to be. And there. So now I've got all of that bathroom schedule. I've got one more bedroom. I'm actually gonna take this little guy and delete it because it's kind of bothering me. The bedroom number four on my plan up here at the top is 13 feet wide and 11 foot 10 in this way. I, the 10 bothers me a little bit. Um, and I might make some changes along here as well. What I'm trying to do is keep everything to be divisible by four. My plywood, my sheetrock, my uh, just about everything in the house is in four foot by eight foot sheets. So if I can cut a four, an eight foot sheet in half and get a four footer or a two footer, then I'm not wasting materials and it's going to save me money. So I'm going to have to measure this wall here in a minute and find out where I want to change that. I'll show you that here in a second. So I'm going to make this 13 foot wide and 12 foot in the vertical. Get rid of that um, little bit there. And I might change that again, but we'll work with that for right now. So that means I'm going to do an offset, 12 feet. Select that and move up. And then I'm going to put a line in and just connect the end point to the end point. Do an offset. Now, if you've done a lot of commands, you can do a right click and you can come down and look for um, your recent commands and you can just pick them from the list. So I'm going to do, uh, in this case, an offset. And I want to do a value of 13 feet. I'm going to take this wall over. And now I'm going, hmm, I don't know that I need to have that room be at an extra foot bigger. So let me just do a couple of design choices. I do a DI for distance and 40 foot six. Mm, be nice if I'm a half inch off of where I want to be. So I have to do some thinking there. Uh, if I do my distance here, I'm at 12 feet. So um, somewhere I'm going to do some makeup. It's really the outside wall that I need to worry about. Um, but what I'm thinking is, is if this is a 12 by 12 room like this, that should be just fine. And so I'm going to do a move. Well, yeah, I think that'll be just fine. I'm going to do a move. i take this one wall and then move it over 12 inches. And that's when I'm going to leave that wall. I'm going to do an offset. Five. Hold this. Hold. And that completes what I'm going to show for right now. And we'll continue on um, with the next phase. But this should get you started. And then you just keep building. So now you would go to the and just pick a side and work your way through the house. Hope you found this helpful.